Politicians may still debate it, but it's getting harder and harder to deny, with temperatures climbing to new heights everywhere. Something's going on out there. David Pogue takes us to Phoenix, where the heat is on. The last eight years have been the hottest years ever measured on the planet. July was the hottest month ever recorded. July 6 was the hottest day. All over the planet, the heat broke temperature records, including in Siberia, 103 degrees. More than half the U.S. population was subject to heat warnings in July. Here in Phoenix, Arizona, the heat has broken all kinds of records, including the longest streak of consecutive days where the temperature hit 110 degrees or hotter. Really cooking today in Phoenix, 118 degrees. I think tomorrow will be even hotter. And it's not just the hot air that's dangerous, it's the surfaces. This steering wheel, 162.5. This sidewalk is 144 Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to burn your dog's paws in 60 seconds. And this playground slide for children, 182.8 degrees. People say, oh, you live in Phoenix, it's a dry heat. And honestly, 100, 105 is not bad. But I want to stress very strongly, nobody is acclimated to 115, 118 degrees. More troublesome is the fact that the low temperatures... Melissa Guardaro is an extreme heat researcher at Arizona State University. Have there been in Phoenix hospitals a rise in admissions? Absolutely, the most number of hospital admissions for heat stress that we've ever had. What can you tell us about the ways your life changes during a heat wave like this? So you don't work out outdoors at 11 o'clock. You go and you hike at five or six o'clock in the morning. I actually have mittens in my car so that when the steering wheel gets really hot, I put my mittens on and that's how I drive. You know you're living in a hot place when you have to keep oven mitts in your glove compartment. Yeah, <laughs> probably not in the glove compartment because you can't touch the metal tab. <laughs> so why has so much of the country been scorching for so long? Well, allow me to introduce that breakout weather term of 2023, the heat dome. It's an area of high pressure, way up high, that traps the warm air like the lid on a pot. It traps the heat, it stops rain from moving in to cool us off, and it just sits there. Unfortunately, not every area under the heat dome suffers equally. You wanna know who gets the worst of it? Cities, cities are where heat comes to stay and comes to live. Becca Benner is a director of climate issues at the nonprofit Nature Conservancy. Cities on average are several degrees warmer than the surrounding areas. And just because of so much pavement, it tends to absorb heat better and reflect heat better. They call it the urban heat island effect. Too much pavement, not enough trees and greenery to cool things off. The heat island effect is worst in the poorer areas of our cities where there aren't many trees and even the bus stops don't always offer shade. Carlos Galvez lives in Phoenix without air conditioning, electricity, or even running water. The thermometer on his wall registers 109. Are you able to sleep in this heat? If I sleep for half an hour, then I'll lie awake for an hour after that because it's just so hot. Do you, do you have some, some tricks to stay cool in here? I drink a lot of water, and twice a day, I pour a bucket of water on myself, and I just try to rest in the evening. In Phoenix, you can get free transportation to the city's 90 cooling centers. More hard for me, more hard this summer. But ever since he collapsed from the heat last month, Galvis is worried about leaving his house. I'm afraid I could faint again if I go out during the day, so I wait till the sun is going down to go out to get ice or water. Even for people who have air conditioning, not everyone can afford to use it. The average bill for AC in Phoenix is over $450 a month. We have a group of people who have to make very difficult choices. Do I pay for air conditioning or do I pay for my rent? This kind of heat wave is bringing up all the chinks in the infrastructure. Last month, President Biden announced some small steps toward adapting to dangerous heat, like expanding access to drinking water, improving weather forecasts, 
and setting up a heat alert system. We should be protecting workers from hazardous conditions, and we will. But Bardaro maintains that there's much more to be done. City planners should develop heat infrastructure, like cooling centers and strategic greenery, and the federal government should start taking heat as seriously as it treats other climate disasters. FEMA has never declared extreme heat as a disaster. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so flooding and hurricane, all those things can be des designated federal disaster areas, but not heat? Not heat. Standing up more cooling centers, providing uh, greater services for people. No, that is not reimbursed by the government because there has never been a FEMA extreme heat declared disaster. Which climate crisis disaster kills the most people? Extreme heat is the climate disaster that kills the most people. In fact, it kills more people than all of the other disasters combined. And we kind of have a joke here that we show a picture of before a heat wave and then we show a picture after a heat wave and it's the same picture. And that's part of the problem because people see tornadoes and houses are upended and hurricanes and trees and utility poles and it's, it's this invisible killer. So it sounds like heat among the various climate disasters does not get enough love from the media and the government. It absolutely does not get enough love. Of course, heat waves aren't the only result of the warming planet. Heat also dries out vegetation and we get fires. Heat evaporates the land, so we get droughts. Heat evaporates the oceans, so we get hurricanes. The Nature Conservancy's Becca Benner cautions us not to think of this summer's heat as something freakish and rare. It's the new normal. It is no longer a future threat. We are living this now. So whether your basement just flooded, whether you just had to evacuate for a fire, whether it's too hot for you to go outside and enjoy yourself, that means we are now experiencing some of the impacts of climate change. We have to reduce emissions and we have to do it immediately and faster.